Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, forex and gold, fundamental and technical analysis. If you are a new watcher and you found this channel uh, by accident and the YouTube algorithm uh, recommended it to you, a warm welcome to you and if you are returning, uh, an equally warm welcome to you and if you do find the videos that I provide every week um, useful to your trading, please don't forget to like as well as subscribe and uh, press that notification button for all of the latest uh, videos as well as I've got a massive catalog of past videos that you can also go through on my YouTube channel a few years, right? So um, anyways, uh, just a quick one before we get into the fundamentals as well as uh, some technical analysis in the week ahead, uh, our trading 180 process in case you're you is really just applying the best of fundamental analysis and uh, technical analysis to our trades. It's not one or the other. Uh, we use a combination of both, but our directional bias is really determined by the fundamentals and uh, how we enter is determined by supply and demand strategies, right? And our risk management. So um, moving on to the week ahead. And in the week ahead, um, this is tradingeconomics.com. Uh, quick synopsis: Ukraine will remain in focus with many, sorry, with any new developments set to create volatility. Right, so there's all eyes on what's happening in Ukraine. Um, also, investors will be paying attention to the COVID situation as the virus is again spreading in Europe and Asia. I uh, saw some data on that, and uh, apparently China have spiked uh, a crazy spike in um, in um, in China. Um, about with regards to the uh, COVID um, uh, cases and causing lockdowns in Chinese cities, absolutely. Finally, speeches from several Fed officials should provide further clues on the course of the US economy. So going back to that COVID situation, that actually may produce some more risk off sentiment. Uh, risk off is basically when there is a lot of fear, uncertainty and doubt in the market. So let's see uh, what happens uh, with with that. Um, so getting into the actual charts and a bit more uh, fundamentals and going to the dollar index. And the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength. Um, the DXY against various currencies, major currencies like the um, the pound, the euro, and the yen. And this is like last week's analysis. And really, um, nothing's really changed from last week, uh, technically. And I was just going over, obviously, what we were expecting last week from a 25 uh a basis point or a 0.25% um, hike, which actually did come, right? So the central bank is hawkish, Ooh, wrong um, wrong tab. So yes, Fed sees, Fed hawks see half a point hikes with data screaming action. And this was from the uh, 18th of March. So Bullard says he favors raising rates above 3% before the year end. One time Dove uh, Kashkari backs increase to cool price pressures. So inflation is going higher um, and getting a bit out of control, right? There's lots of uh, contributing factors to that. And so it's not only putting pressure on the Federal Reserve to hike rates, but many other central banks, right? Because of inflation, it goes high, which is a devaluation of the currency. Um, the central bank has to try to appreciate the currency to combat that. So the Federal Reserve's pivot to fighting inflation was cast into sharp relief on Friday as the central bank's hawkish wing urged a faster pace of policy tightening and a one-time dove said there could be a case for aggressive action. So even that dove is turning, you know, a bit a bit hawkish or a bit more neutral at least. So from that perspective, um, you know, the dollar for me out of all of the currencies is still really the one to buy. So if we're looking back at the dollar index, I was saying this from last week's analysis that nobody knows whether prices are going to go higher or lower, but the main thing is actually just to wait for, you know, some pullbacks, right? And we're not paying, we're not buying the, the dollar index currency or trading that currency, but we can use this as some sort of confluence to understand when the dollar is pulling back overall against, uh, you know, most of the currencies. And uh, if it does, you know, certain zones or price doesn't line up with certain zones, that can be a really nice area to look for potential long trades. So from a daily supply and demand zone, um, the nearest one is going to be at 97. So if prices do fall a little bit, doesn't mean that fundamentals don't work. It just means that the smart money took money at the top while everyone was buying, right? 
on the fact they were selling the rumor. That's pretty much what happened, right? They sold the rumor because they made money, yeah, from way, you know, weeks and months ago. They were making money buying the dollar and uh, really the uh, the Johnny come latelys uh, on the fact that they hiked rates ended up, um, well, potentially anyway, and depending on the, on the pair that you traded because not all pairs actually um, fell away. But um, if you were, you know, didn't choose your pairs wisely, um, and you were trading that day, then you may have got chopped out a little bit. But, um, but overall, you, for me anyway, I'm always looking for pullbacks on the dollar uh, for, for for buy trades currently in the current uh, uh, economic state. So going forward, I always think you know any pullbacks down to any kind of demand zones will be nice confluence, especially when we you know uh, looking at, for example. Uh, pairs like the dollar yen or the dollar swiss if you do feel that the, the, the dollar should want to weaken for whatever reason then um you know you, this, your supply zones would you would use as confluence on the dollar index now uh moving on to the dollar yen dollar yen now for me i was really waiting for a pullback but the, the yen being really really weak matter of fact um, and lagging behind central bank wise, econ um, economy wise, and actually on our spreadsheet, on our custom spreadsheet, um, the dollar yen, when we look at strength divergence, you've got the dollar, which is ranked number two at the moment, base currency, but the um, two, one, twos, and threes being the strongest pairs, one being the absolute strongest uh, from an economic perspective, fundamental perspective, and eight being the weakest, the quote currency. We uh, look for you know strength divergences, and the dollar yen um, you know has been on a on a bit of a tear. We've we've really been trading this dollar or trying well, I say trying to trade it, but we've been long the dollar yen for a while now. I just haven't got an entry on the dollar yen. Got a nice entry on the dollar Swiss a few weeks ago, which actually turned out to be a really good trade. Uh, this week took profit on a nice ten to one trade. Um, uh, this week and uh, you know got a little bit open a little uh, uh, percentage open just in case prices do run a bit higher they pulled back this week but I'll just add into that trade but from a dollar yen perspective um, you know fundamentally we you know we always should really be buying the uh, or say I should anyway and the guys in the private group are buying the dollar over the yen at the moment yes there is a bit of an extreme and prices did kind of go through that long term um, supply zone let me zoom back a bit and again I was saying this for, uh, last week again go back to last week's video I was always saying that you know a, a level from 2017 right why is that going to be significant just because it's there doesn't mean it's significant whatever drove prices down there is it going to be the same thing that's going to drive prices down here uh, you know five years later and the answer is who knows right but Currently, I'm not a buyer of the uh, of the yen, not at all. Um, for me, I'm probably looking for a pullback, but that pullback is going to be quite a deep pullback. But uh, there are opportunities, few opportunities if prices um, do kind of come back, right? Pull back a little bit, yeah. Uh, then I'm probably looking for something a pattern like this, where you see, um, you know, prices come down make higher highs again and then a pull back into that zone right there that would be a really nice demand zone or if prices make continue to make highs then a pull back into what would be a demand zone here right right there that would be what i'm looking at but um for the guys that know um that have taken the uh, the market maker course as well uh, by mark chapman and that are in the group you understand that this also is an unfair auction so you've got to be uh, uh, careful about that as well because that obviously has to be uh, completed so uh, just be be cautious of that when buying uh, the or wary or, or, or at least um, acknowledge that when taking that type of trade right you don't necessarily always want to buy at highs and understanding that um, you've got an unfair auction uh, below you Anyways, the path of this resistance is to the upside. Been saying that pretty much all year, and uh, yeah, just waiting for that pullback. So, um, from a supply zone perspective, nothing really. Um, I'm not looking to really buy the uh, yen, but if you are looking to buy the yen, there's still nothing here. You'd have to get wait for proof of value prices to really make lower lows, lower highs, and then a pullback into what would be a potential supply zone if it did, you know, uh, pull back and make lower lows, lower highs. Um, then that would be that, right? And in fact, any worries regarding um, COVID uh, in in Japan, sorry, in China, 
um, and the spread of COVID could actually um, uh, uh, force money into, again, the safe haven asset like the yen, and then uh, that could push that down. So let's see, but again, you'd have to say proof of value first, then a pullback, then a new entry there. I wouldn't start um, uh, just shorting randomly into thin air, right? Uh, dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss. So yeah, uh, took profit pretty much around these areas earlier in the week. And um, yes, yeah, I was saying to the guys, I'm waiting for really a pullback uh, into into the demand zone. So if we do get something like this, that would be really nice to add into this trade and uh, any, any kind of long trades. So my entry was literally all the way down here um, on the 21st of February. It took a few weeks to, to play out, but um, it is what it is, right? That's the, the nature of uh, fundamental and uh, swing trading. So uh, yeah, for me, that's where the zone is to look for any kind of pullbacks. If prices can get there, we did have a nice I guess, market high around here that prices have reacted from. So uh, let's see what happens. But again, in, in a risk off environment, the dollar can act as a, and it does act as a, as a definite um, uh, risk off currency and money can flow into that but there's also, also as well going to be pullbacks in a risk off environment for me um, I think that the path for least resistance is still to the upside and I am uh, looking at any kind of pullbacks back into this uh, demand zone as a as a, a as a trade obviously um, if you were looking to get short then that was really the area of the 9450s to look for any short trades if you are looking for short trades then that would be really what you're looking for but understand that the more times the level is touched the weaker it becomes so um just be cautious when taking that the, the best really trade is when you you know the first touch of a fresh level um uh, looking at the dollar cad dollar cad um last week's analysis i was saying again nothing's really changed You've got um, two central banks, strong central banks, and I say strong, but two central banks that are currently appreciating their currency um, and uh, hiking rates. For me, I'm not you know, keen on trading uh, 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 currencies where both central banks are doing the same thing. Uh, so with that being said, um, for me, didn't really have an opinion on it, but what happened this week is that prices did actually uh, come down this week, meaning that the, the, the Canadian dollar was the stronger out of the two. Again, maybe some profit taking going on uh, with the dollar. Either way, um, you know, you had an opportunity to get short potentially uh, from last week. So prices did pull back a little bit up into that zone and then to the downside. Now, um, going forward, I'll probably expect prices to stay within some sort of range between this high and potentially either this low or this low. So prices could just stay like this, just literally uh, auction between those two areas or between this area here. But um, for me, I'm not, I'm totally indifferent to this, this currency pair, meaning that, um, uh, you know, it's either a buy or a sell, depending on how you see it. Um, Again, I would probably say a fresher area down into this twenty-five fifty area would be the, the would be this uh, buy trade if you want to buy the dollar. If you want to be a buyer of the uh, Canadian dollar, then we've got a supply zone right there. In fact, I think this whole area would be supply. Um, but I would probably prefer to maybe buy at the market high. Would be if I was looking at that technically. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Dollar, sorry, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. And uh, New Zealand dollar uh, strengthened this week. Uh, the New Zealand dollar is actually number one, um, ranked the strongest on our um, currency spreadsheet, New Zealand dollar, which is here, base currency, um, number one. And uh, you've seen that kind of play out this week. Right, This week you've seen that play out. Again, not necessarily the best uh, pair to trade in the world, simply because you've got two um, currencies that are looking to uh, appreciate their uh, or two central banks that are looking to appreciate their currencies um, so for me you've got this was I don't know why this is uh, not been updated but there and there and I think technically that's actually decent for a short trade technically I wouldn't um, I'm not taking this but that's decent for a short trade really nice um, uh, uh, fresh area of supply and it ticks a lot of boxes in that area um, there is again some demand in here. I know traders don't necessarily like to see this, you know, this type of demand as far as you know, that see gaps in it. But this is just the way that demand 
um, you know, plays out, right? And if you get wide areas of demand, then all you're doing is you're just breaking that down into um, with with levels of support and resistance, uh, either horizontal, diagonal, right? So if I was looking at taking that trade, then the top of that zone would be um, would be where I'd look for a trade because you've got resistance, a bit of resistance there. And then a bit of support there. So if prices do come down, you've also got support and resistance traders looking at that area there. I think the lower end of the zone though is really where I would want to look for a buy trade if I was buying a New Zealand dollar against the US dollar. Or if I'm looking for a sell trade, then that would, right now would be where the trade is. But you'd have to believe that the dollar, US dollar was an absolute bargain at this price. And uh, I have no idea And I, um, when it comes to uh, this, this currency pair. Because again, in the straight fight, who would win? That's the question that you need to ask yourself. And uh, if it's an even fight, it's a harder trade to take. Pound, dollar, pound, dollar, right? Pound, dollar. Um, again, uh, we did get proof of value from this demand zone from November 2020. <clears throat> so the market has obviously seen that 130 round number as a decent area to look for either profit taking or buying of the pound, the pound. Um, you know, Bank of England did raise rates, so um, they did as was expected, but the tone has turned more cautious. So um, the Bank of England are actually worried about um, the impact, or more worried, I guess, about the impact of uh, the, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and they think that potentially the, um, um, the economy may not uh, grow as much as expected. And that's what that's what um, as well the, uh, the the financial institutions are interpreting that as as well. So although they hiked rates, just like the um, the Federal Reserve, again you've got two central banks looking to hike rates. Now I think um, this pair again is very difficult to trade fundamentally um, because in a straight fight, who wins, right? But I'd probably lean more towards the US dollar. The pound on our spreadsheet is um, is number five. So um, uh, I, I, I do think that the pound is probably looking um, a bit weaker, although they are looking to appreciate their currency. But whether, you know, the, the big money will fl uh, flow into, that will create demand for the big money to flow into the pound is another thing. I think in the short term it should do, but in the medium to long term, a lot of question marks around that. Anyways, if you do want to get short, now is a really nice time and buy the dollar against the pound or there. Um, but if you are looking to buy the pound against the dollar, then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, uh, a new demand zone right here. Again, not the strongest area of demand. Um, I do like that hard in, hard out, but um, I do think that area is okay for a potential uh, for a potential buy trade and also as well if you do want to find out a bit more about accessing our spreadsheet as well as you know um, supply and demand strategies just a quick reminder that we do have the uh, the enrollment starting on the 28th of March 2022 which is in eight days from now from this recording of this video um, so lots of um, of, of supply and demand information and trading strategies as well as fundamental and mentoring uh, that I do with the uh, guys in the group who are really doing well. Uh, if you want to find out a bit more about how the guys have been doing and how they apply fundamental analysis to our supply and demand strategies, I have a uh, playlist of interviews with some of the guys who are in the room. Have a watch of that as well um, and I'll put the link in the uh, description box as well as the um, top right hand side, it should pop up uh, or popped up already. So definitely have a listen to that. Lots of uh, great information from the guys. Um, and uh, if you are struggling with the technicals and want to learn fundamentals and want to be mentored, um, then uh, you know you have uh, at least eight days to join. Anyways, guys, getting back to the uh, charts and uh, looking at the Euro dollar, Euro dollar. So um, for me, uh, I think I think some traders did end up getting in short around here. I think this was a bit of a stop hunt around here. Um, I missed this trade because I was actually I wasn't around. Um, had a bit of an emergency, but the guys in the group did uh, manage to get involved. I think on the Thursday or Friday, 
um, and I think there was some profits in that. Uh, there is a nice level uh, just above that, so that trade wasn't necessarily a, a supply zone um, on this chart anyway. I think it was a supply zone on the on an FXCM um, uh, broker, but uh, from a short trade perspective on the Oanda broker, then you're gonna have to really wait for the 112s. Um, there is, in fact, some positive news coming out, and I think what the European Central Bank are doing is that is they they're jawboning, right? When I say jawboning, uh, I'm talking about like the moral suasion, as they say, is that because the euro has been getting weaker, um, it pushes inflation higher. So what the ECB have to do is they have to talk up the uh, the euro. They have to, you know, give the impression that they are potentially looking to hike rates, and they're saying it's realistic. So ECB is not says 2022 rate hike is realistic. Now, whether they do it or not is another thing, right? They might not, but they have to give the market the belief that they may do, and then so the market will price in and start buying the euro by the rumor, right? From early, whether the fact comes is is secondary. But if the market believes that they're gonna high crates, then what that should do is appreciate the euro, and hope for, and hopefully, um, you know, um, get inflation back to their central bank's two percent target. So I do think that this is they're just talking it up. I don't think it's actually um, realistic considering that the uh, Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine. Uh, uh, conflict is hurting um, the EC, um, the European economy, right? So there's they're the most affected by the European, um, or for, by the conflict because because of where they are geographically. So um, I think they're going to talk it, talk it up, but whether the market believes them or not, I still think the path of the resistance is to the downside. If the market does come up a bit higher, I still would, for me anyway, I still am looking for shorts. Right, I think definitely that's uh, that's in the cards. If you do want to be a buyer of the euro for whatever reason, um, actually, in fact, this area here does become now a bit of a demand zone. Actually, matter of fact, let me go back to the dollar, euro dollar. Yeah, so I think that area does become an area of demand. So any pullbacks into that zone there. Um, which is the 109.88 is where you want to look for a potential buy. But for me, uh, again, I'm looking for uh, potential short trades if, if prices can come back a bit uh, on this trade. Uh, Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar and Aussie dollar again. Uh, Australian dollar has been, um, you know, really... Um, uh, strong and appreciating and this is really due to commodity prices um, you know going higher the Australian dollar also as well as being priced in as a potential rate hike as well at some point in the second half of this year um, again against the uh, US dollar is not necessarily the best buy in the world but from looking at last week's analysis um, you can see where pretty much the levels were. Prices didn't really react to that zone there, but they did react here. So for me now, um, you can kind of look for any kind of buy trades if you want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar against the US dollar somewhere around here. If you're looking for any kind of sell trades, I think now is actually a decent time. But again, the question you have to ask yourself is why is the Australian dollar um, you know, a bargain or why is the US dollar a bargain and for here the, it would be the US dollar you'd be buying if you're shorting this currency pair why is the US dollar a bargain against the Australian dollar I mean technically it should be at some point but um, not, I'm not prepared to put my capital on, on that currency pair I'm looking for the best currency pairs and that definitely ain't it um, Aussie yen now this is a pair that I am interested in um, just waiting for a pullback again the guys in the group were really looking for um, uh, buy trades, been looking for buy trades, but when you have strong fundamental analysis or risk sentiment, sometimes the, it just doesn't pull back to the zones that you want, right? But there will be a pullback. There will be a pullback. We just have to be patient. And so any pullbacks into a zone here, I think is going to be a very, very nice trade. Very nice trade to the upside. The 85.50 to 85 round number, I think, is going to be really nice. Even the 86s. And for those of you who, were uh, um, again, are in the group and know about capture pain relief, this is a decent capture pain relief zone right there. I'm not going to explain it for those of you who are, uh, who are not in the group, but uh, just for those of you who are, um, just know that that, and I'll do, you know, I'll do my uh, members uh, technical analysis and I'll come out and I'll definitely do this in the members uh, technical analysis video. 
uh, tomorrow on Monday, but that area there is going to be nice. I think that 85, 80, from 85, 87 area is where I'm looking at potentially getting long, but from a daily supply and or daily demand zone, it has to start from the 85, 52 areas. So uh, let's see what happens there. And again, in the, even in a risk off environment, um, uh, I think uh, every risk off environment has to be taken um, as individuals. It's not a case of just, you know, risk off, buy the yen and the Swiss franc and, and sell the Australian dollar. Every event has to be um, uh, uh, really kind of analyzed. And uh, the reason why the Australian dollar is making a higher highs against the, against the Japanese yen is not only fundamentally are they ahead, but from a from a risk sentiment perspective, the, um, the Russia-Ukraine conflict doesn't really affect the Australian dollar geographically and the Australian economy geographically. Um, they don't really do that much business with, uh, with with the Russians, right? Not as much as the uh, the, the Japanese economy. And I, and I went over this from in last week's uh, video. So if you if you don't understand, watch last week's video and I'll break it down for you. I've um, got some graphs there which basically shows why or the impact um, in, the, um, in the business and the trade deals that um, Japan do with um, Russia in comparison to the uh, Australian economy. So uh, any pullbacks for me are buy opportunities. Um, again, uh, probably maybe some China risk off sentiment might be a reason for a would be a reason for a pullback and also as well just be careful or be cautious um, that that COVID um, um, uh, the spread of COVID doesn't turn into again another pandemic where there are you know lockdowns. But uh, let's see what happens. But from for now, my bias is to the upside for now. Uh, and then we finally got gold, right? And gold um, again, saying a couple of weeks ago, you know that price did come up to the all-time high, right? Bit of a pullback this week again. Prices pull back even more, but now we've come down to this demand zone. So um, like everything. As I was saying before, when you have a large move to the upside with hardly any pullback, you're going to get pulled back to what fair value. If this is a bargain area, this is a expensive area. In between that has to be fair value. So fair value is where the market is pulled back to in this demand zone. You can see there's been some buying here, and let's see what happens in and around that zone to the upside. I think gold is, you know, still is is definitely still a buy. Um, you know, with the amount of risk sentiment inflation um, that is going on, um, I do think that the, uh, the this pullback is a really nice opportunity. Uh, if you missed out on the bull run, I say bull run, but if you missed out on that massive move from February, uh, beginning of February, end of January, now is an opportunity to start to buy gold. And if again, um, you know, risk off remains in a sense of uh, high inflation, uh, you know, the Ukraine war, uh, as well as the spread of COVID now, um, you've really got everything lined up. Um, the only thing you really haven't got lined up is is the fact that you haven't got the US dollar in decline, right? That would be like the perfect gold trade, I think, in, in my opinion, um, if you had all those factors. But just because you've got, you know, you've got three out of four, um, it's still good enough to buy gold if that's what, exactly what you want to do as well as silver. Anyways, guys, take care. I um, hope that helps. And um, again, don't forget that we have the uh, enrollment opens on the 28th of March for a very limited time, probably for maybe about five days, six days, I might just open it for, and then it's gonna be closed again and you know, for the foreseeable future. So if you've been waiting on the sidelines, waiting, waiting, waiting to get in, I know I've had a few, quite a few um, uh, emails, can't remember how many, just asking when is it gonna be open. Um, this is the, uh, you know, you've got about a week left. So guys, take care, have a great trading week, and I'll speak to you all uh, soon.